So this one is some nitty gritty things, okay? How to drive sales and obviously how to drive your tips, make more tips. So there are eight things to provide an exceptional service that you need to do, you need to master, and that's definitely gonna help you in your um, growth moving forward. First one is suggest specific items, okay? So whether they're your best sellers in the restaurant or your personal favorites or your colleague's favorite or your uh, chef's favorite, be specific about certain items on the menu. Um, and you have to be able to explain them with powerful words. And when I say powerful words, they, there are some restaurants that teach this and they want you to word, you know, you use words like juicy steak and would you like to have a juicy steak? Don't make it so it's awkward okay it doesn't have to be robotic have you tried our beautiful steak it is very juicy and tender and it is beautiful no no make it real be specific with some words and the more you you make images with your words the more people visualize it before they start salivating and ordering the food you suggest Right. If you say, I have a beautiful appetizer of mushroom caps with some escargot, it'll be topped with a beautiful cheese sauce that's got some uh, smoked pancetta and a little bit of peppers in there. Um, nice and creamy on those um, mushroom and escargot. Very tasty dish. Uh, it's beautiful with the white wine you're having, ma'am. That would be perfect. Um, whatever you're using, but use specific words when you're talking about them. Beautiful duck breast that's been marinated and blah, 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 you know, tell them if you know the recipe and you know your product knowledge, you'll be able to make images with them. You get the point, okay? So be specific with your words and make it exciting. Um, talking about product knowledge, master that to the next level, okay? I've talked about it today, but always keep curious. It's not, you, you don't arrive at product knowledge in your restaurant and be like, oh, I know it all, I don't have to learn anything else. There's always a new vegetable that's gonna be on a dish that you may not know. There's always gonna be something new and you always have to be curious and go and find out more, more information that'll allow you to answer questions. You know when you know your product knowledge? I know, because I've done that in the past. Is when your coworkers or your managers or your boss or the chef or maybe not the chef, but when other people in a restaurant come to you with their questions about products, you know you've mastered your product knowledge. Okay, so as you learn stuff and you know more and more and, and that you become a reference in the place, trust me, your coworkers will go to you and say, uh, what about that scotch? Uh, what about that dish? What about this wine? Once you do that, you know that you've started to master product knowledge, but there's always something new to learn. And like I said before, there's this thing called Google, so there's no reason for you not to know it. <coughs> Excuse me. Another point, offer options and specials, okay? When you're offering things, um, different options or specials, you wanna use closed questions. An open question is a yes or no answer, right? Would you like a drink? Would you like an appetizer? Versus, uh, would you like our salad? Or would you be curious to try the oysters? Now it doesn't become, will you have an appetizer? It becomes, which appetizer will you have? Would you like a nice glass of white wine or would you prefer a cocktail? I didn't go to, are you going to have a drink? I'm not saying people will, will not tell you, no, I don't want a drink. But what I'm saying is, would you like a drink? Then you're making them think about, oh, the other people are coming that are joining me. Um, I do have to drive or I have to work in the morning or I've had a long day. Or do they start thinking about a gazillion reasons as to why or not they want a drink? When you go in uh, with you know, something specific, would you like a beautiful glass of red to go with this? Or would you like a beer? Then you're giving options or specific options. Beer, within beer, you can be specific. Do you want a beer? No, if you're not selling wine. Would you like a Budweiser or would you prefer one of our microbrewery on top? And then you can suggest what those are. So try to have some close questions. It's an old sales tip, an old sales trick that everybody uses. Another point, guide the conversation. Um, for their experience, for your experience, for, for your enjoyment, you're trying to guide the rhythm, right? We've talked about service steps before. So you're guiding how this evening is going. Yes, some people will grab control and then you can't do anything, that's okay, but most of the times, people don't even know how it works at your place, right? So if you're waiting for them to say, we wanna order a drink, we wanna order food, we want the bill, you're not providing that experience, okay? So you're guiding the conversation. I'll be taking your drink order right now, would you like, and then you go in with your suggestions, right? 
So guide what's going on, bring them in the menu. These are our specials. I'll bring your drinks, then we can take the order or answer your questions. You, you let them know where you're headed, right? You're guiding the conversation. And in that, the next step is guide the service, right? Same thing there. Um, guiding the service will make you be more efficient because they don't know what your, where your other tables are at, right? You greet a table, you're in your introduction, you start chatting, you find out you have something in common, they start having fun, but you have another table you have to greet. Well, this guest might keep you there for 20 minutes. So eventually you have to say, I'm sorry, I have to greet these other guests, I'll be back in a minute, would you like something to drink, blah, blah, blah. You know, so you're, you're guiding the conversation, you're guiding the service. Okay, we're ready to order. And they haven't, you haven't even told a special or something like that. I could say, give me one minute, I want to explain some of the specials in case some people have questions. And a lot of times when you'll do that, there'll be people at the table that'll be like, yeah, actually I wanted to know what your soup was or um, what your special of the day was or what your tablet d'hote was or something like that. So you want to guide it. Some people will, uh, we're talking about choleric uh, and the, uh, the choleric and the um, personalities. That person will go, well, we're ready to order. And you show up at the table and there's four people that aren't ready because they are ready. So that's okay, you deal with that and you make it seem seamless, but you are guiding the service. So the more you guide the service, I'll take your drink order, I bring him back. Do you have any questions about the menu? Would you be ready to order or should I come back in a few minutes? You're completely guiding this. You come back in a few minutes. Have you made a selection? Is it, boom, go into taking your order. So you're controlling the flow of the evening. If you let your guests control the flow, um, it'll you'll be hard for you to be efficient because they might keep you at the table longer than you need to. Uh, if you have to go to everybody and go through the menu while you have other tables that are waiting, you won't be an efficient server. Okay, so do that. And the other point, clean as you go. Okay, if you look at the vast servers you work with, their tables are always clean, always maintained. And by the time the guests leave, all that should be on the table is a glass of water and maybe a coffee mug if they had a coffee or a tea. Okay, so you clean as you go. What that does is you can flip your table faster. It looks cleaner. Uh, imagine if some people are having a couple of beers and you leave the, dirt, the empty beer glasses. Well, it looks like they drink a lot. It reminds them they drink a lot and it reminds them maybe it's time to go home or that they're spending too much money. So you make it seem seamless. You clean, if you're working the bar, you make that bar top clean. You keep those glasses flowing, you keep it clean. Same thing at a table, okay? When you're cleaning, if there's bread plates, don't be lazy. Clean everything, including the bread plates, including the extra utensils. Okay, don't do half of the cleaning and then you leave half the plates. So when they leave, you have some, maybe some bread plates or some dessert plates that are still there and some extra glassware that's been empty, okay? There's always something to do. You're going through that section uh, 20 times uh, every 10 minutes. You should be able to see that there's a glass that can be picked up, a dish, right? Make it clean. The cleaner it is, the more the experience is, is fun. They don't have to be stuck with, with dishes once they're done eating and things like that. Clean as you go, okay? And that'll make it easier for you to it'll be easier to flip the table and easier for you to maintain as you know at the end um, another thing is as i mentioned in the service steps before a sincere quality check and a reaction okay so when you're checking on that quality when you're checking on if they like the drinks if they like the wine the food um, you want to make sure that you have a reaction if they're not fully satisfied and we talked at the, at the beginning about taking ownership of your section of your bar of whatever you're working on the restaurant and that means that even if you see somebody leaving the restaurant and, and say hey thank you how was your evening and they say well it wasn't so much oh I'm sorry and you walk away no go probe what was wrong okay whether it's about the experience whether it's about a certain dish you want to know right if think about it if you're thinking like an owner if somebody doesn't like a dish and they don't want to tell you but you can sense something is wrong if you don't probe that a little further you can't make it better. So if you, if you probe and you find out information that something was wrong or it's not as good as it could be, then you can relay that information to the owner, the chef, the kitchen manager, whoever's in charge, and they can make a change, then they can make it better. Or maybe next time you don't wanna sell that dish because you've had a few people that didn't like it, okay? So you may guide them, we're talking about guiding your guests, you might guide them to something that more people like. If you had three, four, five, six people tell you something's wrong about that dish, maybe you'll skip it next time. If somebody wants to order it, you'll let them order it. But you say, you know, don't tell them it's bad. Just say this and this and this have been more popular. I've had a lot more positive comments about these. You can bring them to something else, but have an ownership mentality. And if you do, when these people leave, they'll feel um, that there's dedicated staff that at least have the will to listen and to try to do something about it and they may want to come back and be served by you, so you're building your own clientele within the restaurant. So, sincere quality check and a reaction to everything, 
okay? The service, the bathroom, the food, you need to have a reaction to what's going on in the restaurant. And last but not least, as we've said them before, invite them to come back. Make them commit verbally, okay? They must remember your name. That's your goal. Make them remember you. Um, invite them to come back, even if they're not at your table. If you meet them at a the door as they're leaving, how is everything this evening? It's great. Hope to see you again soon. I'm Christopher, by the way. It's great. Okay, see you soon. Build that rapport with them, even if you haven't served them or if they just come for a drink at your bar before they go eat. Make sure people remember you. They come back and they'll want that interaction with you because they know they had a positive interaction the last time and that you're on the ball, you take ownership, you're, you know you're aware of what's going on. And when you, you're the person that re-invite them, well, maybe you're opening the door at being the person that gets to serve them or that gets to build that relationship with them the next time. So these are the few tips I wanted to give you to get to the next level. We'll see you in the next session.